I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network, and this is a breaking news alert. The ultra-maga extremist chair of the Arizona Republican Party, Kelly Ward, has been ordered to turn over her T-Mobile records to the January 6th committee after the Supreme Court has rejected her emergency application for a stay to try to block turning over her phone records pending her appeal. Uh, Initially, this was assigned on an emergency basis to the Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan, who oversees the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which previously rejected Kelly Ward's emergency application there and appeal there. Uh, Elena Kagan, as I noted, was an Obama appointee, so many people were wondering, why would Elena Kagan temporarily grant a stay that would prevent Kelly Ward, this MAGA extremist, from turning over her phone records when the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals had ordered that she turn over the records that the district court ordered that she turn over the records. And I told you, I said, look, this is just the process that the Supreme Court has been using. And I explained to you, for example, uh, with respect to the Mar-a-Lago search warrant matter, where the search warrant that was executed at Mar-a-Lago, the special master is appointed there. Uh, The Department of Justice files an emergency application to return uh, the 100 classified records. They prevail in the 11th Circuit. Trump then files an emergency application to vacate with the 11th Circuit there. Then Clarence Thomas granted a temporary uh, stay on the enforcement of the order by the 11th Circuit, but then eventually referred the matter to the full Supreme Court, and the full Supreme Court uh, denied the relief requested by Donald Trump. Same thing with Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham lost in the district court. Lindsey Graham lost in the 11th Circuit when he was trying to avoid testifying before the Fulton County Special Grand Jury impaneled by Fulton County District Attorney Phony Willis. He was arguing the speech or debate clause applied to him and that he was engaged in legitimate legislative conduct when he was threatening Brad Raffensperger, which I said was completely absurd. Um, He filed an emergency application with the Supreme Court. Justice Clarence Thomas is the supervising Supreme Court justice who oversees emergency applications there with Lindsey Graham. And Justice Clarence Thomas granted a temporary stay of the enforcement of the subpoena compelling Lindsey Graham uh, to testify, then referred that matter to the full Supreme Court, and then the full Supreme Court ruled against Lindsey Graham in order that Lindsey Graham has to testify before the Fulton County Special Grand Jury. And I said the same thing was going to happen here uh, based on the Arizona proceeding with Kelly Ward. I said that you had Kelly Ward, her argument was she shouldn't have to turn over her T-Mobile phone records uh, that she was communicating with people on or around the January 6th insurrection that the January 6th committee had subpoenaed. Um, She argued that under the First Amendment, it impacts her freedom of association if the government can encroach on her free speech rights to communicate with these insurrectionists. And I told you that was complete BS. There's a compelling interest for the January 6th committee to get these records. And in addition, it's the least intrusive of means for them to get information because Kelly Ward, when she was called by the January 6th committee, does what all these MAGA extremists do, which is continue to plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. And so the district court said that the January 6th committee is entitled to her phone records. The Ninth Circuit, after Kelly Ward appealed to the Ninth Circuit, ruled in favor of the January 6th committee on a 2-1 vote. It was actually a Clinton and Trump appointee who voted in favor of the January 6th committee with a George W. Bush appointee who actually voted against the January 6th committee, but a 2-1 vote in favor of the January 6th committee. And what the Ninth Circuit ruled is, you know, whether you view this as a kind of a strict scrutiny analysis of First Amendment uh, of, of First Amendment speech. There's a compelling government interest to get these records, and it's a narrowly tailored subpoena. The Ninth Circuit went on to say they don't even believe it's a strict scrutiny issue because we're not really talking about even kind of speech here. What we're talking about is T-Mobile phone records that don't even show the actual messages, but show 
um, just who was calling, when they were calling, the duration of the call. So that's the only information the January 6th committee is going to get here. But in any event, whether you view it as an intermediate scrutiny or a strict scrutiny, the Ninth Circuit said, however we analyze this, the January 6th committee should get these records. So then Kelly Ward filed the emergency application and the supervising judge who oversees the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals is Justice Elena Kagan, who's an Obama appointee. And she gave Kelly Ward a temporary uh, stay uh, of the enforcement of the January 6th committee subpoena. So Justice Elena Kagan had for that short period of time blocked the January 6th committee from getting uh, the T-Mobile records. And everyone was like, what's going on? I said, no, that's just the process. Like I said, ultimately, the Supreme Court, I believe, is going to rule against Kelly Ward here. And I said they're going to rule against Lindsey Graham. Here, let me show you, just so you have it, the video video I did a few weeks back where I laid out the exact process regarding Kelly Ward and Lindsey Graham and explained the outcome. Here, play that clip. The rarest things for the Supreme Court to grant, and those standards that I set out before are very, very, very hard to meet. And so I think with regard to both Lindsey Graham and Kelly Ward, what we will be reporting on soon is that Lindsey Graham's uh, application uh, for to stop the enforcement of the subpoena, uh, to stop him from speaking before the Fulton County Special Grand Jury, that that will be denied. And I also think that Kelly Ward's efforts to try to stop the enforcement of the January 6th committee subpoena to get her cell phone records, that will be denied in due course and will be reporting on that. I'd be surprised if I was wrong on both of those, um, but we will uh, let you know and keep you posted here on the Midas Touch Network. Man, when I look at that clip leading up to the midterm elections, I looked a little tired in that. I looked, <laughs> looked a little tired, looked like a different person in that clip. But nonetheless, I still, even if I was tired, did the reporting and uh, looks like I got it completely right. And that analysis there is the same you know, analysis that I'm now talking about here, which is uh, an emergency application is filed to the Supreme Court because irreparable harm could happen if there's not a full briefing on the issue. The Supreme Court just says, look, just give it a few more days, a week or so longer, or two weeks, and then let's get full briefing from the parties, and then we'll make a decision. Now, one thing that's interesting about this order, though that's worth pointing out as well, is that uh, it wasn't unanimous by the Supreme Court. And so the Lindsey Graham decision was unanimous. And the Trump Mar-a-Lago decision by the Supreme Court rejecting Trump unanimous and rejecting Lindsey Graham unanimous. But this one wasn't unanimous. And so here's what the order says. It says the application for stay and injunction presented to Justice Kagan, Elena Kagan, and by her referred to the court, meaning she took it and referred it to the full court is denied. The order heretofore entered by Justice Kagan is vacated. That's referring to the temporary order which blocked uh, the subpoena for that short period of time pending this order. But that means that the documents will immediately go uh, to the January 6th committee. And then it says Justice Thomas and Justice Alito would grant the application for stay and injunction. So here we know that Clarence Thomas and Alito would have ruled in favor of the MAGA extremist Kelly Ward. Now, that doesn't surprise me, but what is surprising and deeply unethical, but with these MAGA right wing extremists, nothing should surprise us because all they do is engage in unethical conduct. The midterms show that voters recognize you have this radical extreme right wing court that is taking away fundamental rights, ha issuing these incredibly cruel and harmful orders. Um, but what is a little bit surprising is that well, it's not surprising because he's that unethical, but that Justice Thomas doesn't, re you know, he, we know he hasn't recused himself from, you know, the Trump Mar-a-Lago issue. The Lindsey Graham issue where Lindsey Graham tried to block himself from testifying before the Fulton County Special Grand Jury, which is investigating 2020 election interference. But Clarence Thomas's wife was very much involved in the 2020 election interference. She was leading uh, uh, events at the stop, the whatever they call that. I don't want to use the name of it. The 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 terrorist rally that they had at uh, on January 6th. She was uh, communicating with Mark Meadows directly, um, telling Mark Meadows that she needs 
him to buy her some more time so she could amass like the army of God to overthrow the government. I mean, she said stuff like that. She was reaching out to all the state electors who were involved, the MAGA right-wing state electors who were involved in the fraudulent or phony elector scheme where they submitted their names to, uh, they wanted their fake electors to be certified instead of what the actual people voted, the people who voted for Biden. She was involved in all of that. And the judicial canons and the law, frankly, says that a judge, and I've done a whole video on why Justice Thomas is violating federal law here, but the law is very clear that if your spouse is involved in the case, by law, you have to recuse yourself. And Justice Clarence Thomas, you know, he doesn't give a crap about the law. He's a MAGA right-wing extremist style justice who wants to overthrow our democracy. And he laughs at people suffering. There, there, there's really just no other way uh, to say it. But you can laugh a little while longer, Justice Clarence Thomas, but you know, not for too long because the American people get it. The American people are going to hold you MAGA fascist extremists accountable. The pro-normal, pro-democracy coalition is far louder than your weirdo MAGA fascism, whatever the hell that is. And we're going to make sure that our voices are heard, not just in the midterms, but in the future. And we are going to make sure that this country is one of compassion, that this country is one of democracy, this country is one of real freedoms and not your BS, pro-fascist, pro-Putin, Kim Jong-un dystopian vision of, of, of this country. Not not happening. Not happening. But this was a good overall ruling for justice. We have Kelly Ward's records being now turned over uh, to the January 6th committee. They will get her records. They'll have the opportunity to look at it, and we will keep you posted on what we discover is in those records now that the January 6th committee has access to it. But what a horrible week for Kelly Ward and a great week for justice, huh? I mean, all of her losses in Arizona. Oh, we got to, I, I can't leave this video without playing this clip. Can you just play this clip of Kelly Ward uh, where she does the I'm ultra MAGA at the, at the rally here? <laughs> play this clip. Yeah, that's not who America is. Bye-bye, Kelly Ward. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit the subscribe button. We're on our way to 1 million subscribers. Thanks to you. We just passed 700,000 subs. It's free to subscribe. And by the way, check out our Patreon website. Go to patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Become a patron. Join one of the memberships there. There's lots of great exclusive content there. But most importantly, you can help grow this independent media platform. We are not funded by any outside investors at all. So we entirely are based off of your generosity for the growth of this independent media platform. So we see the importance of independent media. Consider becoming a patron of Midas Touch. Patreon.com slash Midas Touch. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Midas Touch. I'm Ben Micellis. Until next time. Midas Touch is unapologetically pro-democracy. And look, we know you are too. So please make sure you check out our best-selling shirt and our best-selling gear, the unapologetically pro-democracy gear. And hey, while you're at it, make sure you check out my favorite shirt and one of our most famous designs. It wasn't rigged. You're just a loser. At store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.